Good morning, good morning. Beginning of a new week. Monday, we're getting toward the end. On Thursday, we're done. Friday, you know what we'll do Friday? We'll do a sum up from the book of Acts. I'll give an exam. That's what I'll do on Friday. Let's do that. An exam, you got paper and pencil, and I'll ask questions, and then we'll review the questions. We'll sum up the book. I don't want to begin 2 Corinthians on a Friday. I want to begin it on a Monday. Okay, but now it is Monday, and we have Paul's trial before Festus. Here's how I've always remembered it. He had two trials, Roman governors, both in Caesarea, which is northeast of Jer- northwest of Jerusalem. And the Jewish leaders were always trying to get him to come back to Jerusalem because they want to kill him on the way. But providentially, God protected him. So now Felix, here's how I remember it, F-E-L is alphabetically before F-E-S, Festus. Felix and Festus. Festus went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem as he became governor. And there they asked, the leaders asked Paul to be transferred to Jerusalem for they were preparing to ambush to kill him along the way. (laughs) You can't do it legal. I mean, why not just, oh, that's religion. But Festus answered, Paul's being held at Caesarea, and I myself am going there soon. Let some of you leaders come with me, and if this man has done anything wrong, they can press charges against them there. So um, Paul Festus comes. He convenes the court. He orders Paul to come. The Jews are there with their leaders. They make accusations, but verse 7, they could not prove them. Now, this, this is where the Roman... Um, emphasis on law really helped Paul because Paul, the, the governor said, I don't care what you say, prove it. I'm not interested in your opinion. What are the facts? We live today in a society because especially social media, everyone thinks their opinion is the truth. So they don't study, they don't know a whole lot. Like I don't know a whole lot on a lot of subjects, but they like to talk. So here's my opinion. My opinion is truth, or it's truth for me. No, you differ? Well, that's your truth. There's only one truth, truth. Two and two is either four or it's not. That's the truth or it's not the truth. The bug is on the rug, true or not true. Can't have both. Paul made his defense, and he starts to do anything wrong, uh, defends himself. I didn't do anything wrong uh, um, uh, in the temple or against Caesar. Festus, verse 9, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Saul, Paul, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there, uh, there on these charges? Because that's where they want you, but we know why. Paul answered, I am now standing before Caesar's court where I ought to be tried because he was a citizen. I have not done anything wrong to the Jews, as you yourself know very well. If, however, I'm guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. Uh Uh-oh. After Festus had conferred with his counsel, he declared, you have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you will go. That means we're going to Rome, neighbor. And remember what the Lord had told Paul that he would be a witness to him, not only in Jerusalem, but in Rome too. So while they're waiting to ship him to Rome, verse 13, a few days later, King Agrippa, that's the Jewish king who's just not a godly king. He's just a king in name. The power is all held by the Roman Empire. He comes to Caesarea to pay his respects to Festus because unless the Roman governor approves of you, you have nothing. He has no power. Since they were spending a few days there, Festus says, you know, I got this case. uh, And uh, I've got this case of this guy. And he, I don't know, he claims this dead man is alive and the Jewish leaders came and tried it, but now he's appealed to Caesar. I got to ship him to Rome to be tried. And would you like to hear from him? And King uh, Herod Agrippa, King Agrippa, 
said, yes, I would like to hear him. So starting in verse 23, the next day Agrippa and Bernice, that was his little lady, came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking military offers. Um, and then Paul was brought in. At the end of that little uh, get-together, uh, before he begins to speak, Paul uh, Festus says again, listen, I want you to help me because I'm going to send them to Rome. But I have to send a letter with them to explain, like, what's the deal with this prisoner? What's, what's going on with them? And I can't even figure it out. Maybe you can help me, King Herod and your wife, Bernice. So Paul, in the next chapter, is going to now make his defense in front of King uh, and uh, Governor uh, Felix Festus with Agrippa there also. And that's going to take up the next chapter, chapter 26. And you, you see, he's on his way to Rome. The book's going to end, Acts, him going to Rome. But I thought of this. This picture came to me as I was reading this. So the governor, Festus, is going to ship him to Rome. King Agrippa comes with his wife and says, while you're here paying respects to me, would you listen to this guy? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm nowhere with this stuff. It's religious stuff. So they set up the date, and now, because of the way they did all that pomp and ceremony, Festus goes, play the trumpets. Dun, 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 dun. Everybody, King Agrippa and his little lady are in the house, and they come in with great pageantry, pageantry and pomp. And then they bring in who knows how he was dressed? Fortunately, his friends were allowed to serve him, bring a change of clothes. Because remember, when you went in prison then, no food, no anything. Just you die. So you die. So big deal, you die. But he had friends there to serve him. They were allowed by King Felix first, then Festus. Not king, governor. So they come in. Here's King Agrippa and his wife. They sit down, special chairs. Bring in the prisoner. Paul comes in. Maybe chains. Just looking at that, if you didn't know what was going on spiritually, you would say, Woo, Governor Festus, I like that new purple robe you're wearing. Where'd you buy that? Whoa, nice. And those rings and medallions, it blinged up. Then King Agrippa is coming in like a king with his entourage, his wife. Now comes this humble guy and maybe a little dirty. Who's the greatest in the room? Tell me who's the greatest. See, to the world, who's the loser? Who's the prisoner? No, I want to be like Festus, the governor. No, I want to be King Agrippa. Look at the threads on these people. The money. The entourage. They just beckon someone and they got servants everywhere. And this poor guy comes in. Who do people talk about today? Who have more books been written about? King Agrippa? Festus? You didn't even know some of his name until we got to this, right? Nah, the true greatness. See, what the world calls great is often an abomination to God. And what God calls great, the world laughs at. So now we got to make a decision. What greatness are we going to pursue? Greatness with God? Want honor from God? Or seek honor from men? Be thought of like, yeah. That guy got it together. She got a PhD. No, she got double PhD. I'd rather have Jesus than houses and land. Rather be his and be held and led by his dear hand. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this whole world affords today. Oh, let's pursue greatness with God as we walk with Jesus.
Amen.